This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Dell XPS 14, 94, 40 for 2024. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Dell did a thing last year. They made the Dell XPS 13 Plus a higher end 13, as you might guess, right? But a kind of weird design. They adopted the capacitive FN row that MacBooks used to have, and Apple got rid of it because people didn't really like it. And they have a borderless trackpad and a edge-to-edge -edge flat keyboard. Kind of weird things, right? So it wasn't super well received. It had some premium features. We all like that, including me, but you know, it was eh. So what happened? Dell decided to do that to all of the XPSs for 2024, the 13, the 14, and the 16. So we have the 14 and we are going to look at it now. And now a shout out to our video sponsor, Trend Micro Premium Security Suite. They handle your security, your privacy. They offer support and identity protection as well. So, you know, spring break just happened. You probably weren't thinking about this when you went off somewhere and maybe took your kids with you, but you know, you're on a public Wi-Fi network. Maybe you want the VPN feature that's built into this. For example, you want malicious website protection. God only knows where your kids were looking up about what was going on in the local area, right? And the summer's coming too. So it only is going to get more tricky to navigate. So with Premium Security Suite, you get 10 licenses. So your whole family is covered here. And multiple devices, not just your Windows PC, but also your Mac, your iOS device, and Android tablets and phones too. You've got identity protection on board. So just in case you need to be notified about dark web monitoring, somebody got a hold of your credit card number and all those other horrible things that are happening these days. Of course, virus protection on board as well. That VPN that I mentioned that can keep you safe in public places and a password manager too. Be sure to to get premium security suite using my link in the description and you can save 10% that way too. And now back to our video. So I love innovation as much as the next person, right? And Dell has a strong line with the XPS. Obviously it's their halo model, their high end, lovely infinity edge, no border almost display, that sort of thing. Uh, so you don't mess with perfection too much. Porsche 911, right? It hasn't changed much for the years. Razor blades laptops haven't changed much because they look good. MacBook pros, for example. And so it's been hard for Dell to change things. But boy, when they decide to change things, they sure change things that affect usability, okay? It's a very clean looking laptop. When there's no visible trackpad, because that entire wrist rest is made of glass, and there's actually an embedded haptic trackpad that's just as large as a trackpad can be, you know, it's a good size. It runs where you would expect it to be for a normal XPS 13-ish sort of design there. Uh, you know, that's a little weird. And last year with the XPS 13 Plus when I reviewed it, I thought I was going to hate it. And I actually, I didn't mind it. It, that, it was okay. It mostly worked just fine. I didn't have too much of a problem. It's a little disconcerting though. Still, you look down and you want to put your fingers and you're like, all right, there's no guidepost there. And then there's the keyboard. So uh, the island style or chiclet keyboard as we call it now has become ubiquitous on laptops. 10 years ago, it wasn't ubiquitous. It was a big thing. And when we reviewed laptops, we'd say, oh, look, it has the island style keyboard. Uh, so flat keyboards like this are not unheard of. You'd see them more on desktop keyboards though than on laptops. Usually there was a little bit of separation. So we have this. It's very tactile, this keyboard, clickety, clickety, click. You feel the clickies. It's not much travel. I mean, XPSs typically just don't have much travel. There's a little bit of concavity to the keys, so you have a little bit of centering, but it is a bit off-putting despite the tactile click because you don't really feel with your fingers like, oh, I'm too close to the edge of the keys. So it looks nice, but probably some people are not going to like that. And then there's that capacitive touch row up top that is your multimedia and FN row. So we're back to people complaining like they did with the MacBook Pros when they had capacitive and the MacBook Airs when they had those capacitive row. Like your escape key somehow in human brains should always be a physical clicky key. It's your escape key. It's your let me out of here key. So when you're feeling like the the computer's already going haywire, you're relying on the capacitive button to work. Okay, I mean, you know, typically computers are pretty stable these days. We probably don't need that level of escape desperation, but tactile keys are nice. Apple gave up on it, right? And, but the reason it's there is probably because it allows Dell to make it a little thinner, which 
they needed to do reduce the keyboard deck area as much as they could because they put some crazy internals in here. We yes, we have Intel 14th gen Meteor Lake CPUs, the one with the AI neural processing unit inside from from Intel. Uh, that's not the big deal though. So that's a nice CPU though, running at 30 watts here. So it's reasonably performant as an ultrabook goes. That's pretty good. But you have optional. NVIDIA RTX 4050 graphics and with the required cooling that that would need you need some more space inside that's why they did that the bad news is, is this is the lowest wattage 4050 on the market currently at 30 watts so I mean in a gaming laptop you would probably see it at 60 70 80 my more even. So constrained watts means a bit less performance, but obviously in a chassis like this, they're worried about heat dissipation, aren't they? And it looks thinner than it is. I mean, it's not a thick boy. It's like 18 millimeters, but they do that tapering of the edges and they're not the only ones that have done it to make it look thinner. Now I'm not going to pick on them for that. That's a fine design choice to do. But you know, when you see it at first, you think, Ooh, it's so thin. And then when you see it next to, you know, placed with the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14, uh, it's really like the same thickness. So it, you're not really looking at a thinner laptop. It just looks nicer, but credit to Dell. I mean, you, they are still removing case volume by doing those curvy edges. So they do have a little bit less space to work with by going curvy, which is a hallmark look of the XPS line that they thankfully haven't changed. In terms of weight, I mean, it's a nice CNC aluminum, hefty, very rigid laptop as always with an XPS. So it's 3.8 pounds, which is like 1.74 kilograms. Not super light, but not unfairly heavy for a 14 inch laptop. Uh, it's a couple of ounces heavier if you go with the OLED display option. All right, let's talk about the display options. Typical for Dell, they have a full HD plus IPS option. That's 500 nits, non-touch, non-glossy. And they have an OLED option, which is 120 Hertz and it is 3.2K resolution. So it's 3200 by 2000. And it's a nice looking display. It has that usual Dell, looks like it has Gorilla Glass on top of it, a little bit like a, a window glass on over the display kind of look to it that can introduce some glare but other than that it, it's nice enough looking is it the latest possible set of innovations on the OLED display uh no probably the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 that I previously mentioned and we will be reviewing has that but it's a nice enough display I certainly don't think anybody's going to complain glossy touch screen Yes. So if you want a touchscreen, you're going to have to go with that OLED. There's only two options here. With the CPU, there's basically only one option. It's Intel Core Ultra 7 processor, the 155H. Now you can get with V Pro, so then it's called the 165H, but really functionally the same processor. Unsurprisingly for an Ultrabook, it has RAM that is soldered on board. It's low power DDR5X fast RAM. You can get it with 16, 32, or 64 gigs even. So that's nice. Some power users do want that. And obviously if you're looking at this, this is kind of that fantasy for the people who like the XPS 13 but wanted more power. Maybe you're using this for some Adobe Premiere video editing, stuff like that. A little bit of light blender, all those things that really just... And XPS 13 wasn't so equipped for in terms of horsepower. We're getting there here now too. And this CPU is also used They'll often run at higher Watts in some gaming laptops for 2024. I would be remiss to not mention that the base model does have only Intel Arc graphics. So the starting price model that you see just Intel Arc, you're going to have to pony up like three or $400 more if you want the RTX 4050. The M.2 SSD is a standard one, thankfully, anywhere from 512 gigs all the way up to four terabytes of storage. You could upgrade it yourself afterwards if you wanted to. You've got a Windows Hello IR camera. It's 1080p. It's pretty decent, too, so that's nice. Quad stereo speakers, two watts each. Decent, not bad. And are they going to compete with that Asus G14 or the MacBook Pro? Not so much, but they do have some bass, and they're not that bad either. So battery life, again, obviously this is going to depend on which display you get. OLED high resolution displays suck a lot of power, especially if you're not using a black theme. Full HD Plus will do better. We do have the OLED one, so that's what I'm going to speak of. 70 watt hour battery, that's pretty decent size for this size laptop here. And you get a 100 watt USB-C charger if you go with the RTX model. And you get a 60 watt if you go with the iGPU only model. Um, so we've been managing at 200 nits of brightness for productivity about six hours, which for an OLED laptop with a 
dedicated GPU, even though it is going to switch to integrated graphics for light test. That's not bad. So they've done pretty well with that. And if you're streaming video, then you could get nine hours on that. So reasonably good. That's quite good. To get inside, we have the visible Torx T5 screws. Just unscrew them, lift from the rear. The edges are always a little sharp on XPSs, so be careful with your fingers. And that's what the underside of the metal bottom cover looks like. And here are the internals. Happily, they didn't go too far overboard in Apple land here. We still have an M.2 standard 2280 SSD here, so should you ever want to upgrade your storage, that is still a thing. Battery over here, obviously, and the two fans and the heat sink cooler right here. Pretty involved, that's good. I mean, we do have, you know, a RTX GPU inside that we do have to keep cool, right? And the Wi-Fi card is right here. It is soldered on. This is just a retainer for the clip-on antenna wires there. And two of the four speaker drivers visible beside the battery. Pretty traditional location. So those are the internals. Now, the... The elephant in the room here isn't how well it plays Cyberpunk 2077. And you can see on screen right now, you can. I'm playing at ray tracing low at 1920 by 1200 resolution, not native resolution, because that's a no, 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 not going to go. But anyway, you can maintain better than 30 frames per second doing that. And the heat and the noise are not as bad as you would think for something that's really not intended for gaming. It's really for video editing, Blender, and stuff like that. But anyway, the pricing. Now, sometimes Dell has sales, and you might see it for $300 off someday, and then that might be worth, worth it. But right now, the base model is $1,700. As we have it set up with the OLED display, the RTX 4050, and 32 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD, kind of what you would really want to have, you're looking at $2,700. You're looking at, it makes a MacBook Pro 14-inch equipped similarly with only a mini LED high-resolution display instead of OLED look reasonable. Those are like $2,200. The ASUS uh, G14, granted 16 gigs of RAM instead, but with a 4060, that's like $1,600. Razor Blades 14, obvious competitor here too for the classy CNC aluminum chassis thing. Less money. And that's really, I think, why people are so bent out of shape. Because S XPS is a premium, people love them, but there is a point where you just say no more. And I think that's really the problem here. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. And thumbs up if you like this vid.